All right, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year. I hope you had a wonderful time with friends, family, all the above guys. Today's video, it is getting cold. We finally had our first big cold snap here in Texas where it really got below freezing pretty consistently uh, throughout the night time and moving into around the low to mid 40, 50s uh, during the daytime. So we're gonna be talking about um, some of my favorite ways to catch these wintertime bass utilizing forward-facing sonar. I know that's where a lot of the things are headed, but even if you aren't using forward-facing sonar, guys, if you're a bank beater, um, you know, if you're kayaking or anything like that, you can utilize these techniques here, throw them the exact same way and still have success on the water. Now, a lot of these techniques here are gonna be big bass specific. I love hunting the biggest bass I can at the start of the new year all the way through share lunker season, which ends in around March where they get all the 13 pounders, 13 plus pounders, breed them together to create the share lunker bass or the Lone Star bass as they call it. Um, to stock back in our lakes here in Texas, which is a really awesome program. Uh, so we're gonna talk about my forward-facing sonar style of fishing. So, you know, kicking it off, um, I do wanna mention that we do have Stella FKs in stock now. We have the 2500 HG, and we also have the 3000 XG as well. So the Stella FK is the top of the line spinning reel offered from Shimano. These things are super, super sweet. The drags on them are very crispy, very low inertia startup and very slow oscillation, which gives you a very heightened casting distance on your casts. You know, when you flick the bale over, it is very responsive. I absolutely love my Stella. And, um, you know, I can't say, you know, I can't say much more on that it's such an amazing reel uh it is a little bit heavier just because of how well made it is but i mean don't let that turn you away guys you know with the weight it also balances out balances out a lot of the rods that you can throw with it um you know i like a longer rod like a seven foot four seven foot six spinning rod um usually in a medium light medium um power and uh, it definitely balances out, makes it feel really, really good in the hand. I typically go with the 2500 size personally. I like to put 10 pound Seaguar Smackdown on it. Another great one is 10 to 15 pound Overwatch from Sunline. And uh, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Usually using uh, Tatsu as leader or gold label and um, just rocking it guys. Super awesome reel. Uh, but there's Stella FK everyone in case you want to do that. Now you can use this first technique with that Stella there, ball head jigs with little tiny swim baits like these little Kitech Easy Shiners. It is an amazing way to just get anything to eat in the winter time. You know, the small little four inch size or the three inch size on a tiny little quarter ounce ball head, maybe even at 3 16th is going to be super deadly around ponds, around lakes just about anywhere you're fishing streams you know you can catch trout if you're around trout on little three inch or two and a half inch um shiners like this from kai tech any swim bait really works the ones that have the skinnier profile are going to have a little more of a tighter wobble in them and it's going to allow you to catch more fish they don't want a ton of action here in the winter time so typically i'm going to be finessing down my techniques that i throw so the easy shiner four inch three inch um, are super effective you can throw other swim baits on there as well um, it really just depends what your fish want at that time typically i start out with the easy shiner profile nice skinny profile because that's where i generally start out you know i want to be as finesse finesse as i can be and then i'm going to move up work my way up to maybe like a typical normal like rage swimmer or something maybe in a little bit bigger size so the next technique is very forward facing centered but you can still do it you know throw a swim jig um swim jigs are great if you're pond fishing in the winter time the swim jig itself i like to run with a little easy shiner type trailer something that slows down the bait a lot um so if you're around a pond guys you can throw this around the bank lines a lot of the times the fish are going to be up sunning because in ponds you know the water does heat up and cool down a lot faster also in shallower water the sun penetrates through each of the water levels a lot faster and more efficiently so it heats up the bank area so a swim jig is going to have that minimal amount of action on there i love the pulse swim jig from b&m um 
and you know what what i love about it is it has such a thin gauge hook it's not super thin to where you're going to bend them out or you know break fish off anything like that but it's thin enough to where you don't have to absolutely jack them you can throw this on a medium heavy rod uh, you can even probably throw this on a medium rod with around you know 17 to 15 pound fluorocarbon i wouldn't recommend throwing braid in the winter time just because Again, you want to make it as finessey as you can. One of my favorite colors in the wintertime, no matter where you're at, is going to be the Threadfin Shad color. It's going to be a ghosty white with a little bit of chartreuse strands in it, uh, a little bit of crystal strands as well. It uh, looks like around three or four different skirt colors in here. I absolutely love this one around the ponds and also forward-facing sonar. If you're familiar with Josh Jones, what he does with the braid swim jig from Sixth Sense, um, he's using like 15, 17 pound line. Um, fast gear ratio reel, some foot four, um, not flipping stick. It's it's more of just a normal Texas rig swim jig rod enough to handle those big giant fish that he's catching. Um, he likes, I believe it's the five eighths ounce size, around half ounce size, depending on the fall rate that you want. Um, but with this, with forward facing sonar, guys, this one here is the three eighths ounce. I really like this one. It's nice and compact. It falls really fast, uh, even faster than sometimes what I need it to go. Um, but if you drop this on their heads, they are sure to eat it. Once that water gets below 50, guys, around 48, you know, 47, and leading down into the lower 40s, they get really, really dumb. When you put that bait on their heads, they're going to eat it or at least just chase it. So figure out what they want, what color they want, if you need to add scent, if you need to add like a little trailer on it, something that can slow it down. Um, this is a really, really effective technique in the winter time. Now, moving up to some of my bigger baits, guys. You know, I can cover a wide, a wide range of the water column. Typically in the winter time, they're gonna be clearer the water, the deeper they can go. Uh, if it's dirtier water, they will be almost backs out of the water sometimes so for the fish that want to stay very very high in the water column i love throwing a glide bait like this this is the zimmer glide bait this is the eight inch instigator this is the gen 2 version this one swims a little bit better than the previous generation ones which we still do have in stock i know a lot of people do love those gen 1 8 inches so we do have a few of those left in stock but these guys here what i really love about the gen 2 is it's easy swim it has a 3d scales on it and we talk about this a lot we've got a bunch of different colors this one here is emerald chad we have ninja we have moonlight these are all great colors diverse colors that you can use just about anywhere in any water clarity but this one here the emerald chad you know um zimmer himself you know he runs a lot of weight on his to allow him to fish it a lot quicker here in the winter time if those fish are really suspended at the top and not moving that much and that's the key if you're utilizing forward facing sonar and you can tell exactly how fast that that fish is moving either away from you towards you left right diagonal if you can determine how fast they're going if they're not going that fast this without any weight is a perfect imitation for a shad just kind of swimming by uh, and they're going to go up and pop it because it's just it's just such an easy meal for them going along with the top of the water column guys a medium sink or slow sink line through swim bait uh, can be the deal now this hangover swim bait is brand new uh, if you haven't checked them out definitely head over to the website this is a six and a quarter inch bait this is a snack for a lot of the fish that you want to be targeting here in the winter time now the slow sink and the medium sink um, from what I've heard are there, there's a big difference between those two now We don't have the slow sink, but we do have medium sink and fast sink But for the top of the water column guys a medium sink with your rod tip slightly up at a 45 is going to give you a Very very good presentation. This hook on here is a BKK um, Milliken released his video after the launch and said it is a BKK. I really like the hook here It's a long shank almost O'Shaughnessy bend in it uh, and the in the swim bait itself is a very forward facing sonar specific bait the the body of the bait is almost blockish so it has a little bit of a head wiggle side to side motion but the tail is doing most of the work in the back it's barely kind of kicking you can put these baits right on the fish's heads and they're going to eat it because it, again six inches is not a huge meal for these fish you know a lot of the time the big eight nine ten plus pounders are eating you know like 8 to 10 inch gizzard shad even 12 inch gizzard shad um, so this 6 inch uh, little swimmer here is nothing compared to those but um, if you're looking for them at the top of the water column 
use this guy here. If you're looking and seeing those fish are hanging a little bit lower, let's say around four to five foot under the water, maybe a fast sink would be more effective. Uh, but I also really love the five inch burrito from Bull Shad. And uh, this here is a five inch, but it's also a fast sinking bait. So it gets down there, gets to where you need it to go, and it also stays there. And that's one of the main things is that you can't have a bait that wants to keep falling down below the fish and you can't have a bait that wants to go by super, super fast a lot of the time. Now, I did find in my last fishing trip that the fish were very, very different um, depending on where I went in the lake. Some fish wanted the bait, worked really, really, really fast past them, uh, and then they'd go and chase it. They were still in that feeding, active feeding mood. Uh, other ones wanted something super, super slow, uh, presented just barely, barely cruising along, um, kind of with like kind of with the glide bait like this here. So um, Utilizing your forward-facing sonar more as a tool to determine what those fish are doing is how I like to fish it um, You know, I really love each of these techniques here These are all very translatable to most of the water that you can have access to you know If you've got ice on it, you know, you're gonna probably be ice fishing not gonna be doing this stuff here but if you are in some of those southern states, guys, it can be a super, super good time, super fun time here in the winter when that water gets really cold. Of course, I do have to mention the Alabama rig bite, um, the cheetah rig. Um, I love them. Don't get me wrong. The, Pica uh, the Picasso uh, A rigs are super amazing. Shane's baits are super amazing. We've got the Dominator. We've got the Money Ball. We've got the Mini Blades of Glory. If you're finding a bigger pod to bait on your forward-facing sonar, down scan or side scan, that Dominator A-Rig has eight blades on it and, it, and you also have your five different baits on there. So it imitates a bigger bait ball a lot easier. So the Dominator is great when you see big pods of bait. If you're finding your pods of bait are very, very small, but they're bigger fish, you know, bigger sized, um, you know, shad, like four to five inch shad that are in smaller bait balls, the money ball is a great one. If you're finding small bait fish, tiny bait fish packed into really, really tight bait balls, the mini blades of glory is the one you want to go after. If you're great at pinpointing um, the fish on your forward facing sonar and you know finding exactly where they're going to be at, uh, at that time, mini blades of glory is what I would do. It's a tiny, tiny profile. Big fish can eat every single one of those swim baits all in one go on that mini blades of glory. So definitely check all that cool stuff out. Check out the brand new stuff from Shimano, like the Stella Poison Ultima. Um, got a whole bunch of cool new stuff. And also, again, guys, we did just restock the baits. Hundos, these here are going to be super awesome. Selling out real fast. We have the seven speeds. And we're going to get the eight speeds here in a couple of weeks, maybe a few days even. I'm not sure. But definitely check them all out. LakeProTackle.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.